Good morning and welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. It's Glenn, Angel and Daphne coming to you from the Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane, Australia. Good day, mate. We have been talking about this hotel for about a day now and it is the perfect location if it's your first or even if you're revisiting Brisbane because uh, it's smack in the middle of the city. It's right in front of the park. You get the beautiful Brisbane River right in front of you. Yep. And you also get a great view of the upcoming Queen's Wharf, uh, which, is, which is basically their MBS. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be opening up later this year. We've also got a beautiful view of the Wheel of Brisbane, as well as... Uh, Street Beach? Street Streets Beach? Beach? Yes. Street yeah. Beach, which is right so across. It's literally a beach in the middle of the city. I know. Why don't we have this in Singapore? <laughs> this is the next thing we this, need. This is, yeah, with the weather. The next thing we need. <laughs> yeah. We have everything. We need a beach in the middle of Orchard Road or something yeah. like that. You think so? I think so. We've already got, I like, the skate park. We've got... Uh, trifecta, yeah, right? Trifecta, yeah, Trifecta, which is the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Snowboarding. So, snowboarding. I don't yeah. think we need a, uh, a, a, beach? a beach in the middle. You don't want to see women in bikinis in the middle of okay, Orchard? Let's, okay, let's, let's have it. Let's <laughs> have it. <laughs> see? I told you. Yeah, for sure. I think we've got highlights of that coming up as well. We do. Yes, a we do. A whole bunch of highlights. Uh, but, you know, our guests for this morning on The Big Show TV, our first guest coming up very, very soon is Brisbane-based Associate Director of Sales for the Adina Apartment Hotel here in Brisbane, Tonya Kreft. Uh, later on, we'll also be having the Chief Operating Officer of the Star Brisbane at the Star Entertainment Group, Kelvin Dot. He'll be joining us as well. Now, if you're not already watching us on The Big Show and Big Show TV, you need to head there now on YouTube and Facebook uh, on KISS92 because we're about to show you what we did yesterday at Howard Smith Wharves because we were guests at uh, Felons Brewing Company and we interviewed its uh, brand director, Dean, Dean Romeo, Romeo, and obviously we had some beer and some food. So okay. uh, that's coming up on The Big Show TV. Okay, are we ready to roll? We are ready. Let's roll it. Hey, Kiss92 fans, it's uh, Glenn, Angel, and Daphne here with this uh, very handsome man, uh, Dean Romeo, who is the brand director right here at Felons Brewing Co. And this is what you guys love, right? Food and beer. We each of these yeah. beers represent the founders? Or yeah, so we, we, actually, we actually, our tanks behind the bar, you have to come down. They're 2,500 litres each. So we've got 10,000 litres of beer behind our bar. And each one of those tanks is named after those four felons. These four beers, however, they've got a different name. Okay. This one over here is known as Crisp Lager, which is a beautifully refreshing lager. It's actually our most popular beer down here at Felons Brewing Co. It's best served icy cold with a delicious wood fire pizza. Mm. Any of them? Either of these two will go well. I think, um, I think with, with, with beer and food pairing, there's always just looking for, um, we call it the three C's, so complimenting, contrasting flavors or cutting flavors so, so i guess different for everyone. yeah i think yeah. it's different for everybody we don't like to force out my kind of taste or, or our team's taste on anybody i think it's a bit of a choose your own adventure mm. kind of, of approach yeah which so is this cool. the most popular beer the crisp lager is absolutely what about this so this next in line is one of my favorites actually it's called galaxy haze so we're really passionate about local ingredients here at felons brewing co so galaxy haze is grown down in victoria it's the closest commercially grown hop uh, facility in australia and this beer is is almost like a, a a bit of a flagpole for that hop so galaxy hop shouts beautiful citrus passion fruit and pineapple aroma and flavor but still really crisp and very refreshing and what about this? They get darker as we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to take you on a bit of a journey, like mm -hmm. the felon's journey. Um, but I promise you we won't be out at sea for 21 days. <laughs> okay. So next is the Australian Pale Ale. So again, just building on those blocks that I spoke about with Galaxy Haze. So this has a beautiful collection of locally grain, grown malts from New South Wales. And they, uh, they, they kind of blend so nicely with a couple of other hops from Victoria as well. So this one's got a beautiful pineapple, big juicy rich malt bill behind it as well. Um, and just a little bit more, I guess, alcohol in this mm. beer over the Galaxy Haze. So that's 5% beer. Um, got a little bit more kind of firmness there. And goes um, well with? I think this one here goes best with our Morton Bay Bug Rolls. Um, so, you know, we are just talking about Morton Island. These, um, these Morton Bay Bugs are farmed on the on the uh, east side of the island. They're um, not actual bugs, right? Yeah, they, they're, well, have you ever seen one before? 
a they bug look, yeah. that big? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. They're incredible. They're bugs from the ocean. Oh, They're wow. part of the crustacean family. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll okay. have to get a photo for you. And what about the last? The last, the last beer. beer is our IPA. So uh, the craft beer movement has very much been a thing over the last two decades. Um, and IPA is a beer synonymous with that, with that journey. So this has a really big orange, pineapple and resin kind of flavour coming through it. Um, it's definitely a bit of a tribute to some bold USA IPAs. So a bit more of a West Coast style IPA. So if you love your flavour, you love your aroma in your beers, I think the IPA is the choice for sure. Well, you know, Absolutely I think we're brilliant. only left with one thing to do. I'm so thirsty. Eat, drink, eat and be merry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank this you is so my much. favorite. This is like a this is like a upscale fruit juice to me. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. It is quite Cheers. pretty. Oh, one for me. Cheers, Dean. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Perfect Cheers. number. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. Felons Brewing Co. And thanks to Dean for being so uh, so hospitable for uh, while we were there. We had a lot of food. Uh, while <laughs> and I we want were at one Fellens of those t-shirts. I forgot to ask Dean for the t-shirt. Yes. Okay. We can get. In they touch had with a Dean. lot of merch actually. They did. Yeah. yeah. They did. It's a proof of a good brand. Like beer warmers, you know. <laughs> and they sell their beers in cans as well. Yeah. They do. Absolutely. To go. So um, you're watching us on the Big Show TV, obviously. Congr um, welcome. We are here at the Adina Apartment Hotel here in Brisbane at 171 George Street. And if you've noticed that the cameras have shifted and we've had one extra person that you may not recognize on camera to your right, it is Tonya Kreft. Uh, she is uh, Brisbane based and she's the Associate Director of Sales here at Adina Apartment Hotel Brisbane. Thank you for the hospitality. It's a gorgeous hotel. So nice. Thank you. Um, thanks for inviting me to be on your show. Oh my goodness, and thanks for having us. <laughs> yes, we love having people like you. Please come more often. Oh yes, okay. But look at this view. I know, absolutely incredible. The light as well, just amazing. Yeah, yeah. And perfect weather, absolutely perfect. You know, Tonya, we've been telling all Singaporeans to come stay at the Adina Apartment Hotel here in Brisbane. Absolutely. It's the perfect hotel. It is, absolutely. I think there's so many good things you can say about it. Firstly, location. You can see location right in front of the river, um, across the road from South Bank, um, obviously the Ferris wheel, Goma, Kupak, um, Gray Street, where all the beautiful restaurants are. Short walk to Queen Street Mall. Mm. Um, I hear that you've been to Hardsmith Wharves, which mm -hmm. is yes. fabulous. And that's a really good view of the, of the river and the city from there. You probably saw that last night. Yes, absolutely. Um, and of course, if you turn left at the hotel, you head towards the Botanical Gardens. And you can spend an hour or two walking around there. So lots to do. And then, of course, if you're tired, um, come back for a little sleep and then head out to Queen Street Mall. Amazing, yeah. fabulous uh, location. Like we were, we were broadcasting out of the Museum of Brisbane yesterday, and they were just like eight minute walk down to your right, and we we're like, really? Should we just take a taxi? Yeah, and I didn't like, trust no. them. I'm like, get me a cab. Yeah. They're like, love know, it. The cab driver's gonna laugh at you. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, uh, Tanya, as we were coming in to the city, uh, as we arrived from Singapore on Saturday, and I, I noticed the hotel from far, you've got the older historical part of the building, and then you've got the newer part of the building that sits atop, <laughs> which is where we are now on the 10th floor. That's Can you correct. tell us a little bit more about the history of the building? Yes, yeah, sure. It's got the most fascinating history. Um, they started building the hotel in 1913. Um, it took them nine years to complete it because, of course, World War I happened and they ran out of materials to complete until 1922. So once it was completed, um, it was part of um, Queensland government and it was actually the Queensland Savings Bank. That's how it started its life. It was a bank. It was a bank. The so the lobby is the original banking hall. Oh. That's why it's so impressive and beautiful high ceilings and beautiful yeah. panelled yeah. walls, so, yeah, and the vaults and the are actually downstairs the in the Boom Boom Room. Oh, yes. right, okay. Boom Boom. Yes, have you been to the Boom Boom Room? Not yet, past the entrance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, 70 years of being um, Queensland government, um, and of course, very exciting is that we had our first radio station, official radio station in Queensland, on the roof of this building. No. no. Dead serious. There's that syn syn yes? synonymously feeling, you know, good here with the radio there station you go. here. <laughs> so it was called um, 4QB, and it was from 1925 until 1942. So I don't know if you've been to the um, pool area, but there's some symbols, music symbols, 
So we're paying homage to that era with the, the music symbols for the radio station. That's lovely. Yeah. So obviously it was on the top of the original building, That's right. not where we are now. That's right. Okay. So in 2014, it's actually called Oogie Boogie as well, the, the actual artwork. artwork. Oogie Boogie? Yes, Oogie Boogie. You'll see it when you go into the pool area on okay. the right. There's a little plaque. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. To that. Maybe we should yes. leave the photos up for a little bit longer, guys, in the Kiss 92 studio. Just to right. be able yeah. to have a look. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Okay. okay. Boogie boogie. And then in 2014, TFE Hotels um, bought the property and then restored it and added on five new floors. So we have 220 rooms now. Mm. Um, and a mix of studios, ones, twos, and of course the beautiful pool and yeah. the gym. So you have, you oh, said you have the, the there, we go. there you go. Oh, these are there we go. So, so, so what type of a room is this? That is a studio and it's facing the river. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the same view here. So That's all right. the river facing uh, rooms have balconies, is that right to say? Most of them, not Most all of them. them. Okay, yeah. all right, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the vaults that are down in the basement. The vaults. Are they still being used in any way? No, they're okay. not. Um, downstairs shame. in the Boom Boom Room. <laughs> yes. So it's a Japanese-inspired um, cocktail bar and restaurant. It's really worth a visit. It's fantastic. I'm not sure if you've got a, a pic of that one. But yeah. worth going down there for a cocktail before you go to dinner at Donna Chang. But the vaults downstairs, they're actually using um, the men's bathroom as one of the original vaults. And then also there's another one that's used as a private dining area. So, so they're if, massive. So perfect. if Glenn were to use the men's bathroom <laughs> down in, in, in Boom Boom Boom, this is just, I'm asking for a friend. And while he was inside and the door was shut, <laughs> would we actually be able to lock him in? Or <laughs> is that possible? Um, <laughs> no. <Thank> you, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Maybe 60 years ago. <laughs> no, not today. She tried to lock me in this bathroom earlier. Did yes, she? Yes. <laughs> always, always trying. Sounds like you're having a lot she of fun. She wants to take over the show. <laughs> Too much fun. All right, we're speaking to Tonya Kraft, Brisbane-based associate director of sales right here at the beautiful Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane. All right, up next, uh, well, in just a while, we'll be playing you a few songs. Jason Derulo is coming up as well. Uh, but right now, do we have any more um, uh, photos? Can Do we, we show, can yeah, we show the very first photo oh, again? Oh, this one. Ooh, what is it? Is that the presidential suite? suite and, uh, kind of like what we doesn't, have. Well, we've moved right that furniture yeah. around. It's, yeah, it's exactly the same. This is it. We don't have the table facing that way, though. So yeah. that's, that's what it looked like before the Kiss 92 that's studio, right. studio <laughs> we came in. And we'll we have to put it back around. that way to sell the room again. Very nice. Okay. Oh, that one has a wraparound balcony, I noticed. Yes. Well, because of um, the building being so old, we've got so many different configurations of rooms as well. Right. So, yeah. It is gorgeous. This is great. We've got like two minutes more of, um, you know, we can the show photos everyone and the stuff. photos. And, and, then, and then we'll be, um, we'll you be know, on, on the air. radio. Yeah. So on right air. now we're just on social. Yeah. Uh, Facebook. So, so, so we okay. might be asking you a few similar okay. questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but this Fine. is beautiful. People you know, when, I was, when I was Googling uh, Adina Brisbane, yes. there was another one that popped up, Elizabeth Street. So that's not too far down as well. It's Anne Street. So we Anne are on the Street, corner okay. of George, the street here, and Elizabeth Street. Okay. So 171 George Street. Oh, they're saying the hi. Helicopter, Some hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have Adina Anzac Square, which is 255 Anne Street. Anne Street, okay. That's right. So that's a much smaller property. property. We've got 70 rooms. Um, Heritage style as well. Oh, look at that. Look at that. This is the, oh, this that's is the, the bank. Lobby, lobby. Yeah. This is where the bank was. As that, Check the, this out, Singapore. So what are the original bits here that we see the original on this picture? The original are the walls, the wood paneled walls. Okay. The press ceilings. Right. Oh. Um, and the marble. Counter? Actually, that counter? Is, no, no, no. No. The floor. And the floor as well, not, 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 not original. original. No. Okay. But those no. wood panels, I mean, to have Beautiful. lost it. Yeah. This long. Yeah. It's absolutely and the gorgeous. cafe is all the way at the end. <laughs> That's get right. Coffee so they get morning. great coffee down there and yeah. some marks and some nice grab-and-go stuff, some croissants and snacks. We have enjoyed it. I have to say... Okay, okay, 30 okay, more seconds, on. yeah. Oh. 30 more seconds. Top of the hour. Here we go. Songs in one place. Can we, can we roll that, please? Kiss 92. G'day and welcome to the big show live from Down Under. You'd be hopping mad to miss it.
Thank you so much for joining us. We are on The Big Show and The Big Show TV, absolutely live from the beautiful Adina Apartment Hotel in sunny Brisbane. And our guest for this morning is Tonya Kraft, Brisbane-based Associate Director of Sales right here at the Adina Apartment Hotel, Brisbane. Thank you so much for joining us, Tonya. Lovely to be with you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having us in yes. your beautiful hotel. It is such a well located hotel it's so it's so perfectly smack in the middle of the city um, and you know as we were coming in on Saturday when we arrived from Singapore I did notice that you have a historical part of the lower half of the building and then a newer part on top That's right. can you tell us a little bit about the history of Adina apartment hotel Brisbane yes sure so Adina they started building the property in 1913 um, it took nine years to complete the actual building of the property and um, because World War one dam unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> happened and they ran out of materials. So completed in 1922 and then became um, part of the Queensland Government Savings Bank. So it was that for approximately 60 years. Um, eventually it was sold as part of the um, casino redevelopment um, and, that, and this whole building became offices. And oh. then TFE Hotels bought the property in 2014 and redeveloped it to what it is now. So we added on five floors onto the top. Um, so we now have 220 rooms, uh, a mix of studios, ones and twos. And you probably realize the ones and twos have all got washing and drying facilities and yes. full kitchens. Yeah. yeah. Now, I if you're listening that. to us and you oh, hear yeah. that helicopter, there's a military helicopter actually flying outside <laughs> uh, the room right now, Keeping which is so cool. I, I think they're <laughs> looking at us. <laughs> And you guys enjoyed your helicopter ride right, the other oh day. My oh my goodness. goodness, it was so oh, yeah. epic. We, we took go? it out at Tangaluma. Tangaluma, <gasps> Island Resort. My favorite. Resort. Yes. Yeah, that's what amazing. every every Queenslander says. Yes. Tangaluma is their favorite. Wow, there's yeah. something going on and out there. And if you're listening to us uh, right now, Singapore, uh, we had the sliding door open just now. It's so yeah. nice and cool. The cool air was coming into the room. And now we've kind of like just shut it a little bit because there are a few helicopters, uh, um, you know, uh, going by. Uh, but once again, we have Tanya Kreft, Brisbane-based Associate Director of Sales uh, for the Adina Apartment Hotel here in <laughs> Brisbane with us this morning. Now, um, Tanya, I hear that a radio station used to be um, here at this hotel. That's right. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, 4QB. So it was the first official radio station in Queensland ever. <gasps> what? From 1925, can you imagine, until 1942. Okay. Um, and it was on the top floor of the building, so great views of the river, mm -hmm. can you imagine? Absolutely. I'm not sure if there was a coffee bar downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Does um, 4QB still exist here in Queensland? No. It doesn't, okay, no. all right. And um, we've got these really interesting music symbols um, that are sort of hovering around, not hovering, they are suspended above the pool, and that's paying homage to that era. So it's called Oogie Boogie Art. Oogie, Oogie Boogie, Boogie yes. Art. I love it. And you know, I love that even though this hotel is well located, you think about hotels being in the middle of a city, you don't have that many amenities, but you have a gym, you have a pool, you have so many facilities yes. still. Absolutely. You have an Asian restaurant downstairs as well, oh, Donna word, Chang. Donna Chang. Chang. Boom, boom, boom. Award winning Sichuan restaurant. Award winning, oh, yes. well, I think we're going to be Check having lunch out. there. That's Phenomenal. why it's located right here in the hotel. That's right. <laughs> Do you know that every single day of the year, Mm -hmm. That hotel, I mean, that restaurant is full. Every it's single phenomenal. day. Wow. Phenomenal. No wonder yeah. I couldn't get a table. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are speaking to Tonya Kraft, Brisbane-based Associate Director of Sales for the Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane. We'll continue to talk to Tonya on The Big Show TV. Meantime, here's Jason Derulo and David Guetta, a great track called Down on Kiss 92. <laughs> So, so Tonya, um, Adina is an Australian brand, but we do know that it's made its debut in Singapore uh, on Penang yes. Road. It uh, took over the Regency yes. House uh, right across from the Istana. Can you tell us a little bit more about that expansion? Yes, sure. So, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where it's I was. Comfortable. No, you're good. You're good. Um, CFE Hotels, together with our joint venture partner, Far East Hospitality, we opened Adina Singapore, which was very exciting, in July 2022. So it's an 88-room apartment-style property, and of course they've got the studios, two beds and three beds, plus they have a fantastic pool on the roof, and they have a lounge, and they have a gym. 
In addition to that, we actually um, opened together with Far East, obviously, Hospitality. Last year, we opened Vibe Singapore as well. Oh, Vibe. Oh, okay. That's right. So that's, okay. yep, that's correct. So 256 rooms, um, also in Orchard, um, and that's hotel style. <coughs> Excuse me. Vibe <laughs> Singapore. I'm just looking at and which is it one? like oh, Mount this Elizabeth. one with the with all the amenities, uh, the the kitchen and all that. Uh, no, so Vibe is hotel style. Hotel room, style. Um, okay. Whereas Adina's are always apartment style. So yeah. you have your kitchenette and studios, mm. or you have your your um, actual full kitchen and washing and drying facilities in the Amazing. ones, twos, and threes. So you have Adina Singapore on Penang Road, and yeah. then you have Vibe Singapore uh, on Mount Elizabeth. That's correct. Right. Yes. Now you guys can't see it, but we're talking about uh, the apartment-style living when, mm. when it comes to Adina Apartment Hotel. Uh, we've got like a dishwasher, we've got an oven, you know, there's a, a microwave washer oven, dryer, yeah. washer dryer as well. The helicopters the... are optional. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Why are there so many helicopters this morning? Something must be going on outside. On. There you go. They look like military. I, th uh, I think they know you're in town. There you go. <laughs> They're trying to get footage of us. It's a They're press like, helicopter. We've got a felon there. A felon <laughs> fan. A felon <laughs> fan. Felon yeah, fan. Felon, felon fan. brewing co. So, um, <laughs> Tanya, can you tell us uh, why should people pick Adina when coming to Brisbane? I think because it's a home from home, firstly. Mm. I think people love the comfort people love the comforts of having a kitchen um, and washing and drying facilities and it's also the layout. Uh, our rooms are, are very spacious. So on average they start at about thirty square meters, which is quite large. And that's a studio as well. Um, so people are really enjoying that aspect. Um, and just, it's relaxed, you know, it's like home comfort, yeah. Location, location, Oh, of location. course, for this yeah, one for in particular, me. absolutely, yeah. you just cannot beat it. I mean, yeah. know, everywhere is walkable, right? Yeah. I would ask too, I mean, you know, you get a lot of guests coming in. What are your tips for, th for like, things that most hotel guests forget? Because you must get a lot of requests for oh, stuff. Oh, we do. Toothbrushes, of course, <laughs> always. Not that I... I use the finger instead, jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah, just small things, really. Um, adapters. Yeah, probably. adapters, adapters. We've got big boxes. Every hotel's got big boxes of, of adapters. adapters that have been left behind. So we've got a really good stock of that. <laughs> oh, right. So you yeah. take the stuff that people have left behind oh, and we save keep them it for in the last next prop gap. Lost property. Right, oh, okay. I see, I see. That's handy. Yeah. But things that people do forget, or what would you recommend people take on trips with them? When they come well, on, I'm to a, hotel. a bit extreme. Like we're going to Italy for three weeks soon, and I'm taking everything. Of like course, that's how I travel. So I think most people these days uh, tend to cover all bases and bring everything. Um, we don't get that many unusual requests, but I think the standard ones, like sewing kits, you mm. know, if the button falls off, or the definitely the toothbrush um, and well, shampoos, obviously. Yeah, oh, there, shampoo yeah. sometimes, but you don't take shampoo anywhere these days, especially no. the big dispensers that are absolutely, better, yeah. 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 And so I think uh, just to add on uh, what's within the room here at <coughs> Adina uh, Apartment Hotel here in Brisbane, uh, they've already got the iron and ironing board within your cupboard, it's got the hair dryer, uh, as uh, Tonya mentioned, the soap, shampoo, conditioner, yes, I love tissue that. box, mm -hmm. you know, hand wash. Body lotion, which is very important to me as well. Yeah, like kettle. Oh, it's so important to me as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kettle is there. Uh, an oven. An oven, a stove, a microwave oven. A dishwasher. Uh, your plates, your bowls, your, your everything, your spatula, everything is there. So when it comes to packing for me, I like to know what's within the room because, okay. you know, sometimes I travel with my own hair dryer because I'm not sure. Okay. Sometimes I bring a little much. travel iron because yes. people don't like to leave it in the rooms. Like yeah. some hotels don't leave it in the rooms for safety reasons. Yes. Uh, so I like to know ahead of time what is there so I know what not to double pack. And okay. I definitely love the washer and dryer as well. Yeah, which yeah for sure. That's very, okay, very good. We're going handy. back on air. All I can say is I'm only staying at the Adina <laughs> apartment hotel in Brisbane <laughs> next time I come back in May. <laughs> How could you do anything different? Yeah. Kiss 92 traffic.
All righty, we've got the usual delays across the expressways, the KPE towards the ECP, an accident after airport road entrance, avoid lanes one and two. KJE towards the PIE, a vehicle broken down after Chuachukang drive exit, avoid lane three. PIE towards Twas, a vehicle broken down after Upper Changi Road East, avoid lane two. On the SLE towards the BKE, we've got an accident after Lentor Avenue exit, avoid lane one. On the AYE towards Twas, an accident after Buena Vista exit, congestion is to Normanton exit. And on the KJE towards the BKE, a vehicle broken down after the PIE entrance, avoid lane four please stay within the speed limit have everyone buckled up be safe as you drive today thank you so much fd for that traffic update uh, we're coming to you live from the adina apartment hotel in brisbane australia it's glenn angel and daphne and of course our very special guest for this morning whom we're very thankful for is tonya kreft the brisbane-based associate director of sales right here at the adina apartment hotel in brisbane and i was just saying the next time i come to brisbane i'm only staying at the Adina Apartment Hotel right here. It's, I feel, I feel right at home. Yeah, it, it literally is a home away from home, like you were saying before. Music to my ears. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've done it right. I mean, it is the perfect location. Now, earlier we've been talking quite, uh, quite a bit to Tanya on the Big Show TV, so if you missed it, you can always uh, uh, watch us on Facebook and YouTube later on at your own pace. But uh, Adina, being an Australian brand, just did a recent expansion into Singapore. Can you tell us a little bit more yes. about the properties you have there? Absolutely. So TFE Hotels, together with our joint venture partner, Far East Hospitality, opened Adina in Singapore in 2022. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, an 88-room apartment-style um, beautiful property with a rooftop pool, um, a lounge, a gym, and self-contained apartments. We then opened Vibe Singapore last year as well, which is a 256-room um, property together with Far East Hospitality um, and also in Orchard as well. Okay, so that the, the second one, Vibe Hotel, is an actual hotel hotel? That's right, hotel yes. Style. And then Adina Whereas Adina is, is like our Adina's in Australia. Okay, yes. so Adina in Singapore is located on Penang Road and um, Vibe Hotel is located at Mount Elizabeth. No, I'm excited. So, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking vacation. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly stay, 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 stay. Love you too. <laughs> yeah, oh absolutely. my gosh, it'll be amazing. Like hey, a studio absolutely. apartment yeah. away from home. Fantastic. Let's do it. Let's, let's broadcast from there. Oh, oh right. <laughs> let's, let's just never go back to the studio again. No. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and also, if you stay at Adina in Singapore, you'll mm. get some delicious um, Australian snacks. <gasps> oh, that's lovely. So there's a cafe there as well? No, they in give the, these little hampers away, like small baskets to, to guests. So it's Australian. a great introduction to yes. the Adina brand. Absolutely. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Very, Very nice. cool. Well, thank you once again, uh, Tonya, for joining us this morning. We know you're very busy. Thanks for taking time off to join us so early right here. For feeding us, for taking yeah. care of us. It too. was <laughs> lovely to be with all of you. And thanks for hosting me today, this morning. It was fantastic. Enjoy the rest of your stay. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Next time you're in Singapore, we will host you. Yes. Wonderful. I come to Singapore often, so definitely. Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank We've been you. speaking to Tonya Kreft, Brisbane-based Associate Director of Sales for the Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane. So coming up on the Big Show TV, we're going to be taking a little look at South Bank. Uh, this is the uh, premier area of Brisbane where you can go and get lots and lots of stuff done, like ride the wheel of Brisbane, also go to the beach within the city the that we were beach. talking about yeah. as well, uh, and take a picture in front of the Brisbane sign. So join us on The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Stay tuned. It's 8.14. KISS 92 Time Check brought to you by Putian. Putian would like to thank you for your unwavering support. Perfect. Thank you very much, Thank Tanya. you so much. Thank you. Okay, so as promised, we're going oh, to be yeah. playing that video. Yes, okay, we're going to be playing that video about uh, South Bank's pristine parklands uh, with, with its famous streets beach. Uh, this is a picturesque pool. With uh, uh, Let's play the video and then I can talk. Let's roll. Talk it. Uh, that's the famous Brisbane sign that we were talking about. A must 
take, and that's the Wheel of Brisbane. The Channel 7 Wheel of Brisbane. Yep. There's the, the seven there, did you see? And this is uh, the Streets Beach. This is a pool with unrivaled city skyline views. There, there, do you see me? Yes, oh, in your, in that in your smugglers. <laughs> in your budgie smugglers. And it's from this pool as well that you can see the upcoming Queen's Wharf. Oh, that's, that's going to be really built, exciting, the upcoming be Queen's Wharf. Yeah. Yeah. Done this year. It's going to yeah. be finished. So you can just see it from, oh, from I'm the I'm looking at it from, <laughs> from, from the balcony. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let's see. Again, they missed a the shot of me. I think they I saw it. I think, that, I think that it was intentional, Glenn. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, never ha before have I seen a beach within a city. I can't believe Brisbane got to it before Singapore did. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're so competitive. I, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we have to be. And you know what? It's 17 acres, the South Bank Parklands, which is big. Very nice. Big. That's big. No, look That's at that. I mean, walk. it's such a hit. And a walk away everyone. from Adina Hotel. A walk away from it right across the bridge. And there's a new bridge coming up, uh, in fact, uh, with Queen's Wharf, the, the, the building, so you will be able to connect directly to the Wheel of Brisbane as well. It's quite, a, quite an extensive area, yeah? It is. 17 acres. Look at that. So I'll tell you a little bit more. It's also the home to Queensland Art Gallery and the Gallery of Modern Art, the State Library of Queensland, the Queensland Museum, and the Queensland Performing Arts Centre. So you could yeah. probably spend a whole afternoon there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I was kidding earlier on when I said I was hiding in the corner. This was, um, you know, before <laughs> we arrived. So, uh, you know, kudos to uh, Ashikin team, and Brian yeah. for going down there and and filming that footage. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. Good uh, job. And we have another person on screen right <laughs> now. Uh, we'd like to say wel uh, welcome and good morning to Kelvin Dot. Uh, he is the Chief Operating Officer, the Star Brisbane at the Star Entertainment Group. Uh, Kelvin, welcome and good morning. Welcome. Uh, his no, mic is not on. Yeah. Okay. So now you're on. Good morning, guys. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining Hi. us here in the beautiful here. hotel. Uh, can you tell us, like, the opening of the Star Brisbane Resort and Queen's Wharf, uh, the whole precinct, is approaching really, really quickly. Uh, tell us a little bit more. How are you guys feeling? You must be over the moon to finally get this project off the road. Everyone's so excited. Yeah. We are incredibly excited. It's been a remarkable 10-year journey. I guess, wow. uh, from go to where we are now. And we're looking to open in, uh, in August, um, a little bit later this year. So we are in the final throes of the final menus being designed, the testing of the facility, um, and uh, opening to patrons, as I said, in, uh, in August later this year. And, uh, and that it's probably the same excitement that, uh, that you guys experienced when you opened Marina Bay Sands. Right. Oh, but, yeah. But what else can we expect, uh, mm. you know, when we visit uh, Queen's Wharf? When sure. It I mean, the, the precinct itself is 12 and a half hectares. Um, so it takes up roughly 10% of the Brisbane CBD. Um, and included in that is uh, four luxury hotels, um, over 50 bars and restaurants, uh, an event centre, um, uh, luxury retail, um, the repurposing of nine heritage buildings and seven and a half hectares of public realm along the river foreshore. I and like that's, that repurposing, that's a lot repurposing, of yeah, those, absolutely. Uh, heritage buildings. Yeah. And, that, and, that's, and that's why you call it a precinct and not the Queen's Wharf building. Correct. Right? The it's precinct is, is uh, known as Queen's Wharf yeah, um, okay. and uh, the, the operating business within the precinct is the Star Brisbane. Okay, tell ah. us a little bit more about the Star Brisbane. The Star Brisbane um, <clears throat> is, uh, is operated by the Star Entertainment Group. Uh, we have three properties uh, on the Gold Coast, the Star Gold Coast and the Star Sydney. And of course now here in Brisbane, the Star Brisbane in, in August this year. So not your first rodeo. Definitely not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> but is it one of the biggest projects you've worked on? Absolutely. Um, this is a $3.6 billion project and is currently the largest IRD development in Australia. Wow. Right. I've been to the Star Sydney. Yeah, okay. So I'm looking oh. forward to, uh, to this one's the Star bigger. Brisbane as well. <laughs> nice. Now, sustainability is such a big thing mm -hmm. right, uh, these days. Um, what, what are you guys doing um, you know, to be in line with this? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the, the Star Brisbane or the Queen's Wharf Precinct um, has um, or is the first development to receive the six-star green star 
coveted um, you know, sustainability design. Um, and we've planted somewhere in the vicinity of over 2,000 trees, um, 60,000 plants. We also have purchased a farm to offset our um, carbon emissions, um, as well as we have an extensive um, recycling program that is across the group. Hmm. Oh, lovely. That's, That's amazing. Very good. Tell us a little bit more about the repurposing of the heritage uh, buildings that sure. you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so there are nine heritage buildings within the precinct. And uh, as part of um, the overall development, they'll be repurposed for a variety of uh, usages, uh, whether it be uh, Michelin star restaurants to galleries to museums uh, to retail luxury shopping and that. So uh, they've all been painstakingly, lovingly restored because some of the buildings are over, uh, over 100 years old. Oh mm. wow, so they mm. were already under conservation. Uh, Correct, okay. yes. So basically what we've done is um, um, completely refurbished um, the outside uh, and, and also obviously the insides uh, to get them ready to be occupied. Mm. Amazing. How are you guys enjoying um, the Big Show TV right now, huh? Live once again different. from Brisbane, <laughs> Australia, and of course, uh, you know, we are definitely um, finding out a lot more about the Star Brisbane um, from Kelvin Dot, the Chief Operating Officer. So are you allowed to, to give us a heads up of who's going to be there in terms of uh, retailers, oh. uh, restaurants, or, or is that a secret up oh, until opening August? Day, opening day, opening <laughs> day. Is that, is yeah. that, are you guys keeping it a tight down. secret? We, or? we are keeping it a tight okay. secret, okay. Um, and that to build anticipation. Okay. Um, and uh, and that the Brisbane community on a whole has been very, very excited about this project because they've been watching it come out of the ground for the last eight years. Yeah. Um, and that so as we get closer, um, we will um, drip teasers. feed and teasers <laughs> in terms of who our luxury retail sh stores will be, who our restaurants will be. As I said before, we have over 50 bars and yeah. restaurants, not all open at stage one, um, but probably around about uh, 20 of them do. Okay, okay, so it's a good start. And then gradually as we progress through the next um, um, 18 months um, to complete the project, the remainder of those restaurants will open. So 18 months after yep. August this year. Okay. Yep. All right. well, maybe I should ask, when can people start booking the hotels? Sure. Um, so we will actually go live for bookings in June. Okay. Um, and uh, and that's so uh, given that we're only opening one hotel to start with, which okay, is the which Star is the Grand. Star. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, the Star right. Grand is 340 rooms. Um, the other two hotels come on 12 and 18 months um, respectively. Okay. Mm -hmm. All we're right. going back on air. Okay. Okay. We'll probably ask you some of uh, we'll the same again. questions yeah. here because now we're going on the radio. Yes. Kiss 92 traffic. We've got the SLE towards the CTE, a vehicle broken down after Lentor Avenue exit, AYE towards Twas, a vehicle broken down after Buena Vista exit, avoid lane two. BKE towards the PIE, a vehicle broken down after the SLE exit and on the SLE towards the CTE, a vehicle broken down after the BKE entrance. KPE towards the ECP, an accident after airport road entrance, avoid lanes one and two. SLE towards the BKE, an accident after Lentor Avenue exit, avoid lane three. And... Uh, that's about it for now. Just stay within the speed limit, please. Make sure you've got everyone buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. I tell you, we are called The Big Show for a very good reason. <laughs> we have like 10 people here in Brisbane with us making up the team, and we have another five in the studio back in Singapore. And we're so happy today to have our second guest on the show. He is Kelvin Dot, the Chief Operating Officer of the Star Brisbane at the Star Entertainment Group. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Kelvin. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we were talking to you a little bit on the Big Show TV, but because we're on air right now, so specifically for anyone that's listening to us on the radio, can you tell us a little bit more about the opening of the Star Brisbane, which is the resort within Queen's Wharf, which is a precinct uh, that's <laughs> going to be opening in August this year? Sure. Tell us 
how excited the team is. Yeah. Team is incredibly excited. This is, as I said, a culmination of eight years of planning and execution. We're in the final stages of menu design, tasting, which everyone's very excited about, of course. <laughs> the best uh, part. The best part. Uh, and also just um, the trials and validations of all of our um, restaurants, our bars, our hotels, uh, and that. So it's a, it's a big effort and the team are really, really excited to be able to open Queen's Wharf and the Star Brisbane in August this year um, to the public. It'll be, um, it'll be huge. I want to be here on opening day. You know what? You we said you wanted to come back to Brisbane, right? I'll so maybe be back August. In May or... <laughs> then you know what? I'll come we back should, in August. We should just well. do a live broadcast again from the Star Wars. I want to buy a home here in Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Already in love with your city, as yeah, you can absolutely. tell. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit uh, more about uh, the heritage buildings that you're restoring sure. to open up uh, this mm -hmm. Queen's Wharf? Precinct. Absolutely. Um, so within the precinct, um, which is uh, which covers 12 and a half hectares or 10 percent of the CBD, we have nine heritage buildings which we have lovingly, painstakingly uh, restored and refurbished uh, to their original glory. And those uh, those buildings will be repurposed and utilised for Michelin star restaurants, uh, galleries, museums, um, and also luxury retail. Okay. Okay. And in terms of sustainability, because obviously you've already restored those buildings, so you want to mm -hmm. keep that history uh, uh, of the city. What about uh, when it comes to sustainability and doing your bit for the earth? Sure, absolutely. Um, we obviously have a, a significant sustainability policy across uh, the group, but specific to Queen's Wharf, um, this is the only and the first design or development uh, in Queensland that has received the coveted six star green star rating for sustainability design. Wow. In addition to that, we've planted somewhere in the vicinity of 2,000 trees and 60,000 plants. 2,000 trees? Yep, and 60,000 plants. Um, so I'm going to be watering uh, lots of <laughs> gardens. Uh, and in addition to that, um, we have also, uh, or the star has recently purchased our own farm to offset our carbon mission emissions. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, we have so many trees in Singapore, but you saying 2,000 trees, you know, that, that, it's that a lot. kind of I think like we impressed have, me. We have at least 2,000 trees in Singapore, <laughs> but this is on one precinct. That's and you true. were saying that the, the whole precinct takes up 10% of Brisbane CBD. That's, That's correct. It that yep. seems like yep. quite a large area. It is a large area. It's literally what we call bridge to bridge from the Victoria Bridge to the Goodwill Bridge. And of course, um, we have built our own bridge uh, in the centre, um, which is the Neville Bonner Bridge that links our precinct to the South Bank precinct. So, Amazing. Yeah. So if you stay here at the Brisbane, uh, at the Adina Apartment Hotel, you, you can, can actually over. see the bridge being constructed yeah. uh, across the river. It's kind of like our Helix Bridge. It is a little bit like our Helix Bridge. But I think bridge. your bridge is going to be a bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kelvin Dot, for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. We're very excited for you guys, and we'll certainly be back. Great. I look forward to hosting you, hopefully, on Skydeck. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you. We'll take amazing. your word for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kelvin Dot, thank you so much. He, of course, is the Chief Operating Officer of the Star Brisbane at the Star Entertainment Group. All right. It's 8.28. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've been looking to my left yeah. since we wow. arrived. Uh, He's still on So next up... Yeah, we've got Jason Dacey coming up yes, soon. Yes, but we also have the Story Bridge. Are we oh, doing that now? Jason Dacey coming up soon. Are we doing the Story Bridge now or later? We can do the Story Bridge now? Okay, so this is what happened yesterday when uh, Glenn and I and the entire team actually, apart from Daphne, this is why the sad face, um, <laughs> climbed the Story Bridge and it was very exciting. And clearly, as you can see, we were kept safe because we're here again. Uh, so... Have a look at uh, what we experienced. We're going to talk you through it. Yep. Look at that. Okay. You know, I thought I'd done So, it. yes, everyone has to do a breathalyzer test. If you're <laughs> over 0 0.5, you're not allowed to climb. Well, it wasn't just Glenn's face that it made them do the breathalyzer It wasn't just Glenn. That was, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it no, wasn't I was just the Glenn. only one who needed the breathalyzer <laughs> test. This is true, yes. Nobody else had a drink. <laughs>
So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they, the, the team does make sure that everyone is strapped in properly. There are a couple of tests yeah. done. Um, That's the lovely Jess right there. That is Jess. And because they're still doing a little bit of construction right now, you okay, so you can see this. This, this is the his, his, history lesson that you will, you will go through as you go up those stairs. Yeah, uh, the workers had to go through, you know, after all that, they had to go into the decompression chamber. The airlock hospital, to, yeah. yeah. So this is what they did every day. In the morning, they went down for like four or five hours. They came up just before lunch. They went into the decompression unit. They stayed there for another 45 minutes, went, went for lunch, came back and did work again and then did that again yeah. before they went home. Is so that it was so that they, they, their bodies would acclimatize exactly. to working so yeah. high up? Yeah, ah. so it was not, very intense. Did. Yeah, did, did, did. very, very intense. Did, did, did. Yeah. Uh, once again, Hi, 1,088 steps to climb uh, wow. when you do this story bridge climb. Getting your steps yeah. and elevation you know, Jess is watching in. right right now. Jess Hi, is Jess. watching. Good morning, Jess. Sorry, I didn't get to meet you, Jess. Uh, the tour duration is about two hours. So what you do is you climb up to the very top, then you climb down the other side, you go across, you climb up, and then you climb down again. Uh, it makes for great views. Not scary. Not scary, no. I think going down was scarier I than going up. I think you would up. have been scared. Yeah. I'm, I'm not scared of heights, though. Oh, oh okay. I then you would, have, you would have been fine. Yeah. I mean, our thighs were a little bit uh, <laughs> tired by the time we got to the top. You get on my shoulders thing. later. No. <laughs> Too tall, then I become too tall. I'm very uncomfortable being tall. So <laughs> children above six, as long as you're above, I think, 1.1 meters, you can oh, also then have I the can. kids join. Yeah. Good, you just by 1.12. Yeah. So, so yeah. the height, is, height of the story bridge is about 80 meters. It is 80 meters, you are right. Yeah. Um, wow. Test me, Angel, test me, ask me. <laughs> okay, how, how heavy is the story bridge? Uh, about four tons. No, 13,600 <laughs> tons. Okay. Four tons. Close, close, close. So as you look down the bridge, I mean, this wow. bridge was meant to be built. Uh, you see a little turn, a little curve in the highway? Yeah. At, yeah. The, at the very end? Yeah. The story about that was that John Bradley wanted it to be straight on true north. But uh, there is a little hotel there called the Story, Story Bridge, Bridge Hotel. hotel. Oh. And this was the local that all the workers used to go to, have their pints, mm. have their dinner and all that uh, so on their breaks, so right? Important. So it's so important. They were going to break, they were going to take tear the hotel down just so that they could build the highway straight. Yeah, oh. that bugger, what's his name again? John Bradley. John Bradley wanted to, to knock, knock that hotel knock that down. Hotel down. So what happened was all the workers Sign dropped the their tools. Oh. And went on a strike. So forget it. We're not working for you anymore. If you're going to remove that hotel, we're well, not going to build out. your bridge. Oh my goodness. And the power of people. The power story, of people. Yeah. So they said, oh, what story. are we going to do? So they went around the br uh, building. And yeah. that's why you see that little curve. And then they it built the bridge. North. And this bridge, incidentally, is built by the same man that built the Sydney, uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge yep. uh, first. And then he went into retirement and he was taken out of retirement to build the story. There bridge. you go. Video wow. there. Oh, oh, so, it's so good. Though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we, as in me, yes. Thank thanks. you, Jess, for, uh, for educating us. Yes, it was, a, it was a wonderful climb. Highly recommended. For yeah, so anyone. once again, uh, it, oh. it's 80 meters high, mm -hmm. 1.25 million rivets holding everything together. And the length, 1,071 meters. But I wanted to ask, what, what is, why is it called the Story Bridge? Did you get the... Yeah, because we just told you the story. Because, because of the story. Because oh. it, there's a whole it's got story, a great story behind it. But there's a story, story behind everything. What? Then there's a Story there's Bridge Hotel also. So yeah. There's the a story, story about yeah. the hotel as well. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Everything's story, yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny, story which came first? The Story life. Bridge Hotel or the Story Bridge? Oh. That's because true. it was, what was it, the Story Hotel before the bridge came up? <laughs> so you go on the bridge and you tell a story. Yeah. Oh, okay. This okay. is why it's called the Story Bridge. bridge. Understood. <laughs> okay. Thank you for answering parents, my question. Parents, you must always have an answer for your <laughs> Thanks, Pa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Coming up, we're going to tell you a little bit more about Felon's Brewing Company, which is uh, what you can see from atop the, the Story Bridge. And um, this is also where we went yesterday. You saw a little bit of the video at the very start of The Big Show TV where we spoke to Dean Romeo. Uh, Felons Brewing Company has such a great story behind it. They named it because of four felons that, uh, that actually escaped. Which city was it that they escaped from? They I can't were, remember which city it was. I feel like it was Victoria. They, yeah, they were convicts yeah. from somewhere. They went on boats. They had lots of rum. They had so lots of no, water. They were given, wait, wait. Um, you th you're sure it's Victoria or you think it's Victoria? I think it's it Victoria. It was from, I, I, I'm not sure this where. This is how the, stories change. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. true. Chinese <laughs> whisper. Yeah. 
No, no, I say I think. You yeah. can watch the video back. Okay. Uh, and but they were intending to go, I think, to Sydney, but uh, the the tides would have it. They got tra they traveled all the way to Queensland, and they, no, they ended got, up here. They ended up on the island. Um, That's right, Morton Island. Morton Island. Island. Morton Island, yeah. where Tangaluma Island Resort is. Yes. Mm. I, remember so that, I remember that story. connection. Very interesting story. And, okay. they, and they packed more rum than they did water. Oh. <laughs> and they got caught in the I storm. I remember that part when you mentioned rum. Yeah. I'm like, what rum is it? Diplomatical <laughs> rum or what? Okay, yes. Okay, what do you want now? <laughs> We're going on air. Stand by. And I can put you in. Mm, mm, I can put you in. Kiss ninety two traffic. Okay, let's take a look at it. The AYE towards Twas, an accident after Buena Vista exit. Congestion is to Normanton exit. Look out for that. SLE towards the BKE, an accident after Lentor Avenue exit, avoid lane three. KJE towards the PIE, a vehicle broken down after Chua Chukang Drive exit, again, avoid lane three. Um, on the KPE towards the ECP, an accident after airport road entrance, avoid lanes one and two. SLE towards the CTE, a vehicle broken down after the BKE entrance. BKE towards the PIE, a vehicle broken down after the SLE exit. Please stay within the speed limit. Have everyone buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Thank you very much for that, FD. It is Glenn, Angel, and Daphne coming to you live from Brisbane, Australia. It's another beautiful day. I do believe it's about 23 degrees outside. Humidity is not... It's, it's not nothing. humid at all. <laughs> it doesn't you know, exist. You know, in Singapore, it might be 24 degrees, but because of the humidity, you know, you feel very like uncomfortable. 28. But it's a very comfortable 24 degrees right now. You know, if you're planning a winter holiday here in Australia, I think you're going to have a great time you know absolutely I think from what i've been told the weather here in brisbane is perfect even during winter it's not too cold yeah mm -hmm. it's so amazing it's nice so if you're planning a holiday here in brisbane good for you Speaking of having a good time, we want to tell you a little bit more about Felons Brewing Company. Now, this is a message brought to you by Tourism Australia. Now, it's known as the Brewer's Hideout. Uh, it's a cozy little courtyard, and it's a modern-day brewery, which is nestled in the precinct of Howard Smith Wharves, right under the Story Bridge on the banks of the Brisbane River. That's right. And yesterday, we spoke to uh, Dean, and uh, you saw the video earlier on. That was Felons Brew, uh, brewery, brewery, brewing cool. Yes, it was. That's right. And I will say, you know, as a, as the youngest one in the group, very aesthetic. Lots of photos you can take in the cozy corners on the outside, out, and then on the other side, there's the beach. I mean, the beach, the water, <laughs> okay. and the clouds look amazing. You can sit by the water, have a beer. But we also enjoyed beer sampling from Queensland's own very, very own brewery. You'll see in the interview that um, Dean said that there's huge these huge tanks that mm -hmm. represent each of the four founders and we managed to sample each of them so they're they have something we from sampled the felons <laughs> sample the felons beer yes <laughs> but they have everything from a hoppy beer to a very light beer which and an IPA you said yes. as well the crisp yeah. lager that no, was my favorite mine was yeah. the mine was the, the galaxy the, the galaxy haze yeah yeah and it, you said it tasted almost like a fruit Fruit drink. It tasted like a yeah, like Dangerous. a fruit drink. Like we were talking a little bit about the four felons. Now, this uh, on on the Big Show TV, they were actually traveling from Illawarra to Sydney, and they were blown off course, and then ended up shipwrecked on Morton Island. So yeah. it's their thirst for adventure and um, and the, the way they sought freedom <laughs> that inspired Felons Brewing Company. That's right. Mm -hmm. Their love for alcohol, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Singapore, you know, I mean, if you come on down to uh, Brisbane, you need to visit Felons Brewing Co. All right. Great drinks, great food, fantastic ambiance. What are you waiting for? Come and say good day the Queensland way. Visit Queensland.com or Australia.com to find out more. Okay, coming up very soon, we've got our friend Jason Dacey, media legend. Legend. 
Yes. Legend. You know, if I'm not mistaken, it's 40 years in the industry. Just wow. this year. Years. Yes, this year. Yeah. And we need to sing him a, a happy anniversary song later. Okay. Happy, it, anniversary happy anniversary to you. To you. Happy anniversary. Let's, let's save That's it a for secret. Is he, he's is around. he coming in? Or yeah, he's coming he in soon. Be coming in soon. He'll be coming in soon. Oh, course, uh, I think we need to open the door for him. Not yet. No, not, not yet. Okay, he's not, not here yet. yet. So, right. happy anniversary to, to you. you. Happy anniversary to you. We practice happy anniversary to Jason. Happy anniversary to you. He's probably he's watching us from my media my heroes, actually, Jason. He's, he's a yeah, legend. Well, I'm starting to get nervous, you know. ESPN You've never met him, no. huh? Yeah. He's wonderful. He's wonderful a really guy. nice guy. Yeah. Legendary. I telling him, as legendary now, as FD. 40 years later than as even bigger. Then you? Oh, no, I mean, look, FD's I'm listening to you right bigger, now. Bigger, of course. Huger. Really, I mean, Jason has done... Everything. Later you ask him. Okay. He's done so, TV, so he's done radio. Not just he's TV, he's been like on, on huge networks. Cha channels, oh, yeah. Wow. Massive yeah. channels, yeah. Exactly, and he's so humble. Yeah, great guy. He's so humble, not like me, you know. I'm oh. not humble. Uh, humble <laughs> is not your middle name. I can't speak for FD. I think, you know, he, he feels like I he's humble. but I think FD is humble. Yeah. yeah, 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 for I'm sure. The only one is not humble. Oh, yes, oh. Hey, I'm humble. I she's am very <laughs> humble. Thank <laughs> you very much. Oh, oh, oh wait, is trying to talking. say he's very humble. Fd's talking right that. now. Fd's talking. Right I'm now. very he's humble. He's humble. Except when it comes to Jason, I am more legendary. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, incidentally, I mean, speaking of Jason, we we're saying he's a TV legend, he's a radio legend. He also writes, in fact, yeah. uh, 13 hours ago, he posted uh, an article on the ABC News website mm -hmm. on who is Lawrence Wong, the man poised to become Singapore's fourth prime minister in six days. Decades. Can so I flex there is a bit? An article there. Lawrence Wong follows me on Instagram. Oh yeah, because I met him at the Sea Games. Nice, oh. nice. That's flexing yeah, so indeed. Because you know, like, the both of you are so petite. <laughs> <laughs> I was thought you were gonna say we're both musicians. I, I think Lawrence Wong is the most petite prime minister we've ever had. This is probably true as well. There's, he's, well, is he's pa actually, there's power. She's a chili buddy like me. It's a chili. Oh, you said that. Oh, I didn't right. say that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare call uh, Lawrence Wong a chili buddy. <laughs> oh, sorry. You said petite, no, but yeah, no one is smaller than is me. What she's used for girls. She's allowed oh. to say that. Oh. She's so petite you, as well. Oh. Just um, out of 37 years Mr. of being Wong, old. Daphne cool whom you follow, just called you a chili buddy. No, <laughs> I went to say you like pack a punch, you know, there's, there's power. Oh, 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 oh. I see, I see I the reverse think. lights coming on right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, when he comes oh, to the no. studio, when he comes on the show, okay? I'm you a can, huge you fan. Can come. You just come Mr. in. Mr. Wong, I'm a uh, huge fan. Mr. Wong. <laughs> let's get there, let's get there. First it was chili buddy, now it's Mr. Wong. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will go. Prime uh, Minister Wong, from now on. No, not no. Mr. Wong yeah, anymore. Because the last time I saw him at an event, I just said, Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm sir, thinking, why sir. am I calling him sir? I'm 54 years old. He's 51 years old. You can still what? call sir. Sir Ti. You can still call someone younger <laughs> than you, <Bro>. sir. <laughs> it's okay. La. At the end of the day, they're all just ministers. They're all still people. We're all uh, people, you know of what? course. I think they feel more um, appreciative when you treat them like a fellow human being. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and yes. you see them like just because they're ministers and then you're like... Uh, All of a sudden you shake. Just like yeah. the first time I met Madame Halima, I was so... Uh, you, you were call, so nervous. I call her Meme. <laughs> <You> was, <laughs> I, I was, was, I was meh. there. Yeah, meh. you were so nervous. And then so. the whole Meme thing. Hey, happened. first yeah. time I met you, I was also very nervous, you know, because I listened to you on... When you were this yeah, high. When, when, I was, <laughs> when I was still recording songs on the radio but you see, no? for no mixtape. Uh, I mean, a bit lah, still. Oh. Uh, but both lah, both, of you, both oh. of you. I still feel... I mean, Do we make your knees weak? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm very, I, I just respect both of you. <laughs> what? what? Like, do I make your knees weak? No, but she just... Yeah, but it's okay. okay. No, do I, I make your knee, knees weak? I respect both of you. That's, that's what it is. It's an excitement. The See, how, how come I don't feel? have a mic stand? Okay, oh yeah, it's right here. <laughs> Clearly, you now, need now one. Now it keeps moving, right? This morning, oh make us all do Balik. I know how I'm going to use this. He uh, clearly, this he doesn't even know how to use a mic stand. Oh my goodness. How long have you been in the business? I usually have people do this. <laughs> you, you have mic stand people. Yes. We'd like to say good morning to every one of you that's watching us on Facebook and YouTube. Remember, if you have any Mama. questions... <laughs> my mother is watching. Oh, hi, Mama. Mama. Hello, Auntie. Good morning. Auntie, hello what's, everybody what's your in the studio. Name? Denise. Denise. Auntie Denise, good morning. Yeah, this is the way, you know. I mean, uh, all mics should be like this. 
You're then holding you're, the mic stand. Hey. Yeah, and then after you just put it down. You Freddie Mercury. And it stands on its own. Ingenious, whoever yes. came up with the mic who was, stand. Who was the one this morning that told us all not to use mic stand? Uh, Glenn Ong. Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning to everybody watching us on The Big Show TV. Chester, Sally, Adam. Uh, we have Christine. We have Juan Alun as well. Yeah, just as many names as we can get off here. Any special Adina Brisbane okay. deals for how, the Big Show listeners? How are Ooh. you, uh, Ash? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody in the studio. Okay, okay. Brian, Rockstar, good morning. Rockstar how are Glenn. you? <laughs> Very good. Shalini Susan. Susie. We're calling uh, Shalini Susie wake in, up, in Australia. Australia. Little Susie, wake, wake up. up. Jason! 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 Oh, my goodness! Jason, Jason. Oh, my goodness. Oh my Hi. goodness, we were, we were ending up with nothing le left to say, so we started singing. Oh, I've got, <laughs> uh, by the way, I've got you some chocolates. <gasps> oh this my is my God. husband's favorite. Really? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. This is what I grew up with, so I oh want to share with you guys what I grew up with. Oh. Okay. So I can take you back through sensory uh, experience to my childhood. That's lovely. <laughs> and we definitely want to find out more about you, Jason. I mean, I've known you for quite a few years, but I mean... Never asked you anything about your childhood. <laughs> they were singing your praises. <laughs> oh, yes, nice we have wait. Daphne. Nice Hi, to Daphne. Meet I've you. seen you on the air. Hi. Uh, so, so we had, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know I know you. Course. Thank you for my birthday greeting, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, yes, when yes. was your birthday? You heard. You sang. You sang for me we with uh, Adrian. That's right. With Mr. Chu. Oh, we have Last another song week? for yes, you today. Exactly. We have another song for you today. Really? Is it? One. Is it, Yes. Two, three. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. you. As in Happy anniversary. 40 years. years uh, you've, been, you've, been on, uh, you've been an entertainer. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your 40th year. 40th, 40th year as a broadcaster, yes. Happy anniversary, Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to Jason. Jason Dacey, the legend. Happy anniversary, Happy anniversary to you. you. And Thank you. More. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. By the way, I'm wearing one of my favorite band's t shirts Gold. called Cold Chisel. Cold, Cold Chisel. Cold Chisel. Are they an Australian band? They yes, sound they are. cool. Are yes. they from Brisbane? They are not from Brisbane, but they're from Adelaide, actually. They're from okay, Adelaide. Okay, we're going on air. Okay, let's go, go on air. That's the red card, which means. Shut up. I say no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back. That's the late Amy Winehouse with Rehab right here on Kiss 92. All the great songs in one place. It's Glenn, Angel, and Daphne coming to you live from the Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane. And we have our third guest for today. He is, well, I can only describe him as a media giant. <laughs> he is a legend. He is a good friend of SPH Media as well. He's come back to Brisbane, but he goes back to Singapore quite often. The one, the only, <laughs> Jason Dacey. Hello, guys. That's Ooh. the longest intro I've ever heard. <laughs> really? But I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, we love God. you, Jason. We miss you in Singapore. <laughs> oh, I, I really miss you guys, too. Uh, but I am going back soon. Um, by the way, I, I grew up in Sydney, but I chose Brisbane because I love Brisbane so much. It is the best city in Australia. We Welcome are, to Brisbane. We are falling in love with it as yeah. well. Every sure. single day. Tell I wake up, I'm like, I love this place even more. Yeah, we, we, we absolutely love this city. Tell us a little bit more about what you're up to these days. Well, I am celebrating 40 years as a broadcaster. Uh, I came back uh, from Singapore almost five years ago after many, many years there where I first met Glenn more than 20 years ago. So I'm working in radio here, I'm working in TV here, and I'm working in digital media here. And I just wrote a story about the new Prime Minister of Last Singapore. Week, yeah. We yeah. mentioned that yes. for ABC. Yes, yes. yes for ABC. So... There's always that connection to Singapore. Right. Um, and I pretty much retired as a sports broadcaster because you'll remember me, Glenn, as a as the sports center presenter mm -hmm. along with Colette Wong and, yes. and every, your good friend, uh, good morning, Angel. Colette. Yes. yes, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've kind of retired from sports broadcasting, but I am still broadcasting. I've really got into politics and I've reconnected with a lot of the bands that I used to follow, including the T-shirt I'm wearing, Cold Chisel, Australian band from Adelaide. 
Uh, so it's been, it's been really nostalgic. I was away for 25 years, can you believe it? 25 years living in Singapore mostly, but also in the US and the UK, a bit of time in Malaysia working in Astro. So it, it's been fantastic coming back. My daughter now is 14, can you believe it? Wow. Wow. 14 years old. Uh, she started at Tanjong Katong Primary School, but now she's going to school here in Brisbane. She's in year nine. Wow. wow. Okay. Is she enjoying herself? She's enjoying herself, but she still misses her Singapore friends. And as a family, we're going back to Singapore on the way to Europe in June. So for the first time in, in five years, she's going to reconnect with all, oh. all her Tanjong Katong primary school she friends. She hasn't been back in five years. No. Oh, well, she's COVID happened. Yeah, we had the COVID that, yeah. for like t two years plus. Yeah. So uh, she's super excited. She, she's very much like me. She loves the, the food, the spicy food. So she still thinks about, you know, the parata, a spring leaf parata there and, and all these sort of <laughs> restaurants that we used to go to, yeah. Little India. We, we would have brought you some parata, but you know the, the, the immigration <laughs> yeah. was yeah. coming we in. We couldn't you know? bring it I know. in. I know. It's, sure. it's easier going to Singapore exactly. than coming that way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we're all like, funny. Me, my daughter and me, she has all the bad habits that I have and all the likes that I have. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, though? That now, the wonderful is. thing about Jason Dacey is that he's such an, you know, all rounder. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do anything, which is which is what I admire about you. Jason. Are you saying I master of like none? You. Master of none? No, no. <laughs> or no. Master, of master of all. Master of everything. Master of all. They were singing your praises before you came in. Well, yeah. that's the thing that you have to be. And and you know, going back to uh, Australia after so many years it was was challenging. But I've had to like do a bit of digital media. You know, just written a story about DPM Wong becoming the next prime minister for ABC News website. Bit of radio, bit of TV. So yeah, trying to make a living. Right. You know, Jason, just before we go on The Big Show and The Big Show TV, um, I'm going to be asking you this on uh, our live feed on Facebook and YouTube about what you were told before you started your career when someone said you were never going to make it as a broadcaster. Oh, so hold that thought oh and we're going to watch that on The Big Show TV. All right. Keep it right here on KISS 92. <laughs> the only way to get out of bed. So hear someone yeah, actually said to you, uh, in fact, it was a few months into your first job on air at the Seven Network in Sydney when the chief of staff pulled you aside and said, Jason, you're never going to make it as a broadcaster. Why don't you try to get your old <laughs> job back? <laughs> exactly. So I, I started in newspapers when I was 17 from high school. In, you know, in those days, that's what you did. You didn't necessarily go to university. Yeah. And uh, so I, I worked for about four years for the Sydney Morning Herald, which is a big paper, as you guys know. Then I had the dream of working in TV um, because I'd done some TV reporting. So I, I went to the Channel 7 network in Sydney and I realized that I had no skills to do TV. I didn't know how to write, didn't know how to present. My voice was terrible, no confidence. And I was really struggling. And, and as you said, uh, Angel, the, the chief of staff pulled me aside and said, Jason, look, you're never going to cut it. This was 1984, 40 years ago. You should go back to your old job. You're never going to make it as a broadcaster. But I fought on. <laughs> I, said, yeah. I, I fought on. But it took a while. It took a while. I don't know whether you guys can relate. Uh, it takes a while before you can really click uh, in, in broadcasting. Some people are naturals at it. Yeah. I wasn't a natural at it. I, I had to work hard at it. But you sounded back then the same way you sound right now. No. Like for, for, him to say, <laughs> no. for him to say you don't have a good voice. Well, I think I must have burnt those old tapes uh, that, that <laughs> I did. No, I had no life to the voice. And you know what unlocked it inside me was doing um, improv acting, doing oh. music. And it's almost like this person inside me came out and became the broadcaster, that, that I you know, became a successful broadcaster. But what made you want to persevere in this line? I mean, if you weren't doing broadcasting, what do you think you would have been doing? I may have gone back to you know, working in newspapers, but I, I really love broadcasting. I don't know, maybe I was like you, Glenn, that when I was a kid, I would do commentaries of um, games that we were playing in the backyard. And I always had that dream to be a sports broadcaster. Right. Um, so you already knew what you wanted to do. I did, I did. I, you know, I love sport, I love writing, I love telling stories. But it took me a while you know, to really get to the stage where I was you know, professionally adequate. But after that, I worked at CNN, BBC, uh, of course, ESPN for many years, Astro in Malaysia, and then yeah. SPH. Right. Nothing is impossible <laughs> if yeah. you really want it. Exactly. And, and, and Jason is so genuine. When, you talk, when, we, when we talk about sports and all that, I mean, you know your sports. Oh, my goodness. There are some people out there, right? Who, Pretend um, to know yeah, their sports. I mean, they don't really know their sports, but he does. He knows mm. his sports. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think I probably don't follow it as closely as I used to because now I'm I've moved away from sports broadcasting. But yeah, it's in the blood. It's not that hard to go back. <laughs> to be a if you love player. it, you love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I know you love football, Glenn. That's you're, right. You're My Everton lost I, six I nil saw that. to Chelsea. I saw that today. What a wacky. Yes, but they're still not going to go down. No, <laughs> your your team. My glasses <laughs> just fall. That's okay. Your team has got a lot of resilience, you know. Points deduction, doesn't matter. Financial problems, exactly, doesn't matter. Right? He'll get through. Like a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> it never dies until it's on his back with a leg I get so angry here. when they lose, you know. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. And Sassy Kumar is also an Everton fan, right? Yeah, there are a yeah. few of us. Just there are a few uh, of you, yeah. A handful. handful. Yeah, a handful. Who do he you was trying Andrew? to recruit who me. Guys, who do you guys support? People who play uh, good football. All right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Daphne's a Newcastle United fan. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I used to date a Newcastle United oh, fan. Really? <laughs> Before they got the money. Oh, so I see. they were doing oh, very right. poorly. Okay. Yeah, this was a while ago. Was right, while okay, ago. okay. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the... Seems the, to be doing better now. The things, yeah. the things that stick out for you in the 40 years that you've been... Uh, what are some yeah. of the greatest what are the and high, the worst highlight <laughs> memories? Yeah. Well, I think one of the best was when I sat down. Like, I, I was at BBC and I was a producer. And then the people uh, who were normal presenters, the sports presenters, they were going, went on holidays. This was the Christmas of 1994. And they said, Jason, I know you've done some presenting before. Do you mind just sitting in there and filling in? And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. You're great. Yeah, so I, I sat in there and I was a bit rough. But I think, you know, maybe I had something that, that the big boss saw. And w when I did that fill in. He said, I want you to do it full time. I want you to take over from the people you're filling in for. So oh my that, that God. was an amazing feeling. And also, I think the first time I broadcast on CNN in, two th in 1999, that was also an you know, amazing feeling, you know, yeah. especially when I thought about all the knockbacks that I yeah. had, mm -hmm. especially that boss in 1984. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is well, he still around? He is still around. He is? He is still around. Is I he still in the same job? Like no, no, he's pretty old now. Yeah, um, he would be. Yeah, but uh, I, I thought about whether I should, uh, you know, be able to use his name. But I didn't use his name, but I often wonder what he'd think. Yeah. I'm sure he knows he's had to eat his words. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he's, he's yeah. um, seen you on TV, seen yeah. uh, your growth and, and, you know, what you've become. And, uh, yeah, he probably regrets what he said. But I'm sure, you know, each of you has gone through the same thing to a certain extent where you've suffered setbacks. 100%. Someone has told you you're not good enough, yeah. you know, that you're not going to make it, and you proved them wrong. Oh, many times, man. Yeah. And, and that the would have been him. three years of my career. It would have been him. Yes, I mean, exactly. without him, yes, yeah. you may not have worked as hard or tried no to push prove, back, you know? You yes. Know. But isn't it interesting that you can kind of try too hard and I think that was my problem early on, that I'm trying too hard. And in a way, the flow isn't there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need that flow. When you're broadcasting, you need to kind of forget where you are. Of course, you have to be aware of the time and all that. Yeah. But there is a flow. And I think when you're trying too hard, you are stopping that flow. Yeah. Who is the most... Performance who's anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, when you try too hard. Who's exactly. someone uh, you'd like to interview that you have, in dead or alive? Paul McCartney. Okay. Paul McCartney. Oh, I God. saw him actually here in oh. Brisbane. Look, he's got goosebumps. <laughs> Paul McCartney, I went and saw him, an 81-year-old on stage, just a few kilometers from here at Suncorp Stadium. It was uh, back in November, 1st November. And I'm thinking, this is a guy that I've followed. You know, I'm 62 now, and I've followed him since, you know, 1964 when I was a little toddler. Mm. When my parents bought further requests, the EP, and had, I want to hold your hand and roll over Beethoven. Here I am watching an 81-year-old perform on stage and doing it amazingly. Wow. So Paul McCartney would be the one I would, would, love, would to love to interview. Right. Wow. Jason, would you say you're a very disciplined person? I am. I am disciplined. Not with uh, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> He's no, brought I, us some chocolate. No, I better give you these. It's your Achilles <laughs> heel. I love but Fredo's. Fredo's. But thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Look at this. I mean, one wouldn't yeah. hurt. This is, <laughs> no, I, I, I am I fairly disciplined. And you know, Glenn, I love sport, right? And I love working out. Yeah. And that's the thing about Brisbane. I love cycling. And as you may know, I used to cycle a lot with you know Glenn from Money FM, Glenn mm. Van Zeffen, and right. others. Even Neil and I used to do some jogging together. Glenn's tuned in, by the way. Oh, Good great, morning, great, Glenn. Great. Hello, buddy. I'll see you soon. But Brisbane is a cycling paradise. And oh. every day, I, in fact, I did about a 25K cycle um, this morning. Did you uh, do the tour to Brisbane? I didn't, but I cycled at the same time as that. And I saw them. I kind of waved because they, they were like doing 90K. And I didn't, just wanted to do it. And I was working that day. But, but, yeah, I love to work out in terms of exercise. Keeps me young. 
Yeah. No, you look younger now yeah. than some of the early photos I've seen of you. Yeah, you know, I, I told them that. You've got now. those embarrassing photos. Of we, the we actually <laughs> do. We actually do. Do we have time to flash something right now or not yet? Okay, we'll do it later, but we have something to flash oh. later on the Big Show TV. So <laughs> surprise, we'll wait for surprise. that. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about this band you have on your shirt. Well, I know. You you're also right. proud of uh, you know your your homegrown bands and and I really admire and respect that. Yeah. It's like Godzilla on your shirt. It looks like Godzilla. Yeah. It's Cold Chisel and Cold Chisel is an Adelaide band. You may have heard of a solo artist called Jimmy Barnes. Yes. Mm. Jimmy Barnes was the singer of Cold Chisel. Okay. And, and since I came back to Australia a few years ago, almost five years ago, I've interviewed a hundred different heritage artists, uh, and some of them you know, like Air Supply, Bachelor Girl in excess mm. right. wow. interview, interview members from those bands. But of course, there are a lot of bands that didn't make it in Singapore that I've interviewed as well. Mm. So Cold Chisel is, is one band that I've connected with um, since they got back. Um, so that's been great, very nostalgic. So if it's like, okay, coming up. Going on air? Yeah. Okay. I love you and me. Kiss 92. G'day and welcome to the big show live from Down Under. You'd be hopping mad to miss it. All right, welcome to an extended version of uh, the big show and the big show TV, an extended edition of the big show and the big show TV. That's because we have a good friend of ours on the show, Jason Dacey. Good morning, Jason. Good, morning. good to see you guys. Good I, morning, I feel, Jason. It feels really wonderful to be here in Brisbane where I live, welcoming my Singaporean friends the best city and the best state in Australia. Absolutely. And now that I've fallen in love with Brisbane, I'm so happy you're living here, Jason. <laughs> I know. You're someone to come visit. Got a spare room, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, you, if you think the name sounds familiar, you would have heard Jason on uh, Money FM, but he's also a legend in the sports industry. Uh, you also write. You're also, you're also a lover of music. I mean, you were just talking about Cold Chisel, which is an, a band from Adelaide, and you were talking about all these legendary artists that you've interviewed, people like In Excess, Air Supply, Bachelor Girl. Wow. Um, and, but I've always seen you as a sportscaster and a journalist, but I didn't realize that you also interview musicians. So which do you prefer, like sports, uh, politicians, Obviously not. Uh, or, mu or the music industry. I mean, which are your favorites? Well, I, I think um, it used to be sports, but I almost feel that the sports chapter has, has closed. You know, I had so many great years uh, working in sports, World Cups, Olympics, Premier League. I was host of Premier League in Malaysia for four wow. years, as you may know. Uh, I've done a lot of things. So I kind of ticked everything off. But now I, I think I love doing sports uh, as, as kind of a hobby, but music interviews. You know, I've interviewed more than 50, almost 100 different uh, music acts since I came back to Australia about five years ago. Um, you know, even like, um, you know, Spandau Ballet, you know, Tony from Spandau Ballet and a lot of bands uh, I've interviewed over the past um, few years. Um, the Hooters, uh, another one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's, it's almost like I, I see my life as many different chapters. You know, right. the, there was the UK chapter, the US chapter. The very happy Singapore chapter, and here I am back in my homeland after 25 years living abroad. <laughs> yeah. What What do you think of the uh, Taylor Swift boom? <laughs> Taylor Swift is my daughter's favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to love her. I lo well, I actually do. As a radio host, you have to reconnect through the current music. And my daughter's 14, and I'm exposed to all her music. Um, unfortunately, Taylor Swift didn't come to Brisbane, as you may know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did do Melbourne. She did do Sydney. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So she didn't come here. But I think Taylor Swift is great. She's a billionaire now. Yeah, yeah. 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 musician billionaire. Purely musician from yeah. billionaire. Yeah, yeah very, very uh, clever with her marketing. And the music's pretty good, too. But, you know, I'm a more of a you know, 70s, 80s person <laughs> historically. A bit like FD, I, I think. We have that in common. Um, but I am kind of exposed. But he's got a bigger ego than you. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all, all this talk about well, I definitely ego. miss F FD. Um, it's too bad he didn't come down. Yes, yeah. it is. See too what bad. I mean? I told you, right? Jason is so very humble. He's such a humble man, so modest. You can say good morning to FD. He is watching. Good and morning, listening. FD. Um, I know you would have really loved the food here. Um, yeah. I've got I've got you a Freddo frog. Aww. I'm going to give it to Glenn to, to take no, back. Don't give oh, it I don't Glenn. know if that's. Don't give it to Glenn. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll bring it back. But you know, I don't we've, think I'm ever oh, going to oh, see FD that. Oh, FD is talking now. I, I don't think I'm what? ever going to see that. 
<laughs> he yeah. says he doesn't think he's no, ever no, going to no, see Evie, it. No, 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 I promise, I promise, I'll, I'll save one for you. <laughs> I will save one for you. Okay, we're going to head to the Big Show TV, and we've got a surprise for uh, Jason Daisy, where you're going to have to talk us through some of these photographs uh, that we're going to flash on the Big Show TV. So join us on Facebook and YouTube. My darling, I love you to the moon and back. Finally for some. Okay. Okay, so let's have let's, a look. At, let's have some uh, fun. Let's, let's have some fun with this. You might have to say more <laughs> stuff at wow. deep because he can hear. By the way, now. I'm gonna take my hat off because you probably don't think I have hair anymore. I definitely have hair. Look at it's that. Just, it's just there bad hair. It's just bad hair. <laughs> You've got oh. a good head of hair. <laughs> yeah. Look at it's real hair. It's, it's real, real hair. Yeah. Look at the 1987 photograph. Yeah. I mean, you look like James Dean right there. I was gonna there. say Tell Tom Cruise. You know, we're both um, Year of the Tiger. You know, 1962. Closer to Tom Cruise. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Closer to Tom Cruise than James Dean. Yeah, but it's just that whole, uh, not not the way you look, but that whole persona. Yeah, you but know before I mean? that, look at that, 1984. I know. Just above. That was around the time they told me I should try another Stop. profession. <laughs> yeah. Why, <laughs> though? You know, That's sometimes, sometimes people get picked because of their looks. You look good-looking guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I looked about 12, though, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you look but the that's way why you do. still look young <laughs> now. But, but what do you think about some companies now? You know, they, they're choosing their talents based on their looks. Influencers based on their numbers. Yeah. They're choosing them based Well, look, I think you have to be the whole package, and we know that media is a very competitive uh, industry, so you need to, to look okay. I think that's part of my vanity, you know, that I am working out still and trying to, yeah. you know, but like yourself, Glenn, we always try and make sure that we can compete with the youngsters. Um, so that's it's part of it. But of course, looks aren't everything, are they? Mm. Right. No. Okay. Don't be too vague. Charisma <laughs> is worth much more. Tell us more. about that 2008 photograph where you're in front of a big crowd. Is that Wimbledon? That what is, is the French Open. French Open, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was in the US there. That was, that was when Nadal won. Mm. Um, I think oh, he wow. won so many times there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool, but you can see the red clay behind me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was yeah, that when you were with uh, ESPN? Yes, ESPN USA. Okay. Uh, okay. 2003, Angel, is um, when I'm working with your good buddy, uh, Colette Wong. Ah, okay, what was that? Sports uh, Center. Sports Center, Sports Center. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. in Singapore. I never used to okay. miss it. <laughs> yeah. Where's 2000? Sports Center, every uh, evening. Top, top. Oh, I, I see it, I see it. Yeah. yeah, so, um, and then 1995 is the is the bad um, kind of 90s um, pastels. <laughs> What's the one below, 1989? That's Sky News UK. What okay. A, wow. Tell you what, I was so nervous uh, there. I, you know, I was just coming into TV presenting at that time. Mm. And you can see me biting on my pen. <laughs> <laughs> how, how has the entertainment industry shifted and changed? I mean, it has, definitely. It has. Well, I actually wrote about this. And I think because the, you know, the con traditional media providers have got less potent because of the social media feeds. You know, everyone has these things, this phone I'm, mm. I'm holding up. So, you know, the old days, we used to sit down and, and people would watch me on Sports Center with Colette Wong in, in 2002 or 2003. But that all changed. And uh, unfortunately for people like us that we know there are there are a lot of distractions out there to try and get audiences mm -hmm. yeah I mean you're, you're a journalist as well and you do a lot of writing but um, it's more video content that people are interested in now instead of reading an article how do you feel about that though yeah it can be challenging and and I think being a you know a boomer a late a sort of a late boomer it is challenging to keep up with all the technology and your Instagram posts and all that um, but I still think you've got, uh, if you can write a really good article, and I've just written about DPM Wong uh, for the ABC News website, about him uh, becoming the new PM next month. If you can still do a good story like that, I think there is an audience for it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, attention spans, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. Exactly, the same. exactly. Yeah. Like when you watch those old movies, remember those old 70s and 80s movies? Yeah. And they it were took so long for something to happen. took so long. <laughs> <laughs> and now the pace of everything is just so quick. Yes. Like you go make a sandwich, you come back, they're still trying to kill each other. Exactly. Like, yeah. Even if you watch Jaws, you know Jaws, yeah. the movie, and when I was a teenager, I went and watched that. If you actually watch it, it's very slow to start with. Yeah. They're doing all sorts of things, you know, before the shark attacks. <laughs> <laughs> what about and things like a Sorry, go, oh, ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to talk about Jaws, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Jaws then. Go ahead. Talk no, about I was going to say, like, in a scene now, it's like you have five things go on and then people are like, Wow, it's so slow. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very traditional. I'm sure FD is like this as well. But I don't like special effects movies. Mm. I like movies with really good stories, good characters. Same. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I don't. Whenever I see special effects, I lose interest. 
Yeah. Mm. I don't like special effects. I just like uh, lots of action. And he likes I like, like action. He likes action. No, he likes yeah. cars blowing up. I don't mind that. As long That's as it's true. not this computer generated sort of yeah. I, I just find it boring. Mm. Mm. What about things like AI? I mean, there's a whole wave of AI in terms of writing articles. Uh, summarizing articles, uh, scripts, you know, emails, yes, you know, yes. co uh, content on your posts and stuff like that. It's cheating. People are using <laughs> AI all the time. Is it cheating? Do you think it's cheating? Yeah, I think to a certain extent. And it's so easy. And it, uh, one of the radio shows I host, I got Donald Trump's voice introducing my segment on, on British music. And he said, I, I would build a wall and I'd make Queen Elizabeth pay for it. I'd stop the British invasion. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a pretty bad Donald Trump accent. <laughs> no, but it's good. I mean... <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's I like it, it, you can, like, I'm sure we could get a, you know, a Glenn, Glenn Ong voice talking to me now. I mean, mm -hmm. they've had Lawrence Wong as well on uh, Facebook oh, yeah. selling stuff that he wasn't selling. Yeah, exactly. the deep fakes. Yes. The deep yeah, fakes. the deep yes. fakes. Yeah. So it is really quite scary. Scary. It's yeah. quite scary now. Yeah, it is. It's novel now, but it's not going to be funny in a few years from now. Oh, they're yeah. going to utilize it in a way that just benefits who, whatever they want to do, I think. Mm. And I, I feel personally, I mean, I might be from a younger generation, but I feel like the media industry or the entertainment industry is just moving too fast at this point where it's like, you know, the, with the algorithm and all that mm. kind of stuff, it's mm. like before we even understand a trend, it's, it's on to the next one. Yeah. Yes. And we don't have any time to appreciate the craft of it or anymore. Even take, you know, at least process it for a little while. Yeah. 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 My daughter being 14, I, I realized some of the challenges that she's got. She's got all the benefits of this, this smartphone that I'm holding up, but there are a lot of challenges when it comes to even the vocabulary that, that you know, that we use, um, we used to use, and someone over 14 doesn't have the vocabulary of a 14-year-old when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah they're speaking in uh, acronyms. It's like <laughs> lol, lol. Oh, yeah. You know, and then things like that. Okay. Going back on? Going on here. Haley Steinfeld, Love Myself, right here on Kiss 92. All the great songs in one place. It's Glenn Angel and Daphne coming to you live from Brisbane right now, catching up with our very good friend, Jason Dacey. Once again, welcome to the show, Jason. Great to be here. I am really enjoying the music and the food that you've got here. I'm looking forward to tucking into some of that. Uh, looks Please. like ban banana, banana bread. bread. Yes. Yes. That is very Aussie, by the way. Very Aussie. So, Jason, you've been in uh, Brisbane for how long now? Back for almost five, five years. Five now, years. Enjoy, yeah. uh, it's not your original home city. It is Sydney that, that yes. you grew up in. Why should people come to Brisbane? Brisbane is the friendliest city in Australia. It's got the best weather uh, and lots to do. And, and it used to be kind of a transition city to go to the Gold Coast for Singaporeans. But the thing about Brisbane now, it has so many attractions, whether it's F&B. I love markets. I love going every, every Saturday I go to a market called the Davies Park West End Market. Lots of uh, you know, fruit and veggie, but you've got music, you've got cafes, you've got um, breads and, and all sorts of delights. It, it's absolutely fantastic. Of course, New Farm is another area with the market and you may have been there. And the river just opens up so many things. And I'm actually looking across to ABC where I do some work across the river there. Uh, it, it, and, of course, the climate here is fantastic. People say, oh, it's pretty humid here in Brisbane. And oh, I go, oh, no you haven't way. been to Singapore then. No. Yes. <laughs> I say, no way. This is not humidity. This, this, is, this is just nice. I think right. the only time I broke a sweat was up in the Story Bridge, and that's because we were doing and so hard. Yeah. But is it also because it's almost winter, Jason? What is uh, Brisbane like during summer? It's you know pretty warm, pretty humid, but nothing like Singapore. It still it still cools down at night a lot. It, so it'll get down to about 20 degrees at night. You know Singapore can be 25, 26 at night, so yeah. it's perfect. Uh, it's it's really lovely weather, and I think this time of year, this is my birthday month, as you guys know, April. <laughs> uh, this is the best weather in Brisbane. So I think uh, and Ooh, we got lucky then. Winters, <laughs> you know, you know, having lived in Singapore for almost 20 years, I was there from 2001 to 2019. Of course, a couple of stops in Malaysia during that period. Yeah. I, I found it really hard to get used to the cold mornings here uh, in winter, in winter. So it can get down to about, you know, six degrees, eight degrees. And that is pretty cold for someone used to Singapore, Singapore climate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Last couple of questions uh, for, for Jason. Now, you do radio here in Brisbane. I do. I do a couple of different radio shows. So I do a music radio show on 101 FM Logan. And I also fill in, fill in on a big uh, radio station called 4BC part of the um, nine entertainment network. And that is super challenging. Uh, so you get 
we sort of talk about politics, talk about events of the day, and we have callers come in. Uh, so that can be quite fun. That can be quite fun. And, you know, as, as I mentioned, celebrating 40 years uh, as a broadcaster, living all around the world, including Singapore, I can share a lot of the stories and my experiences. And I often talk about Singapore and law and order in Singapore and all the great things in Singapore that I think could be perhaps implemented here to improve Queensland life. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't wait to read your article on Lawrence Wong. Lisa. I know, isn't it amazing that I wrote that last night, and here I am with you. It's a momentous it's day for Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. But what do you think? What do you think behind. about uh, Lawrence Wong taking over on May 15th? I think it's really exciting. It's really exciting. He's the first guy that's not, you know, from a, that other generation. He's a new generation. He's what 51 now. Yes. Yeah. So he's a Gen X, a bit like you, Glenn, in the Gen X. Uh, and look, a very smart guy. Uh, Neil Humphreys was actually sharing with me. He did a panel show with him about 10 years ago and, and was super impressed by him. Could speak off the cuff, mm. very modern. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great step for Singapore and exciting news. And he looks so likable as well. Right? He does. So friendly. He is very likable. And he likable. plays the guitar. Yeah, as well. He's a musician. He's yes. a musician. Yeah. I, I, I heard that. I, I haven't actually met him, but I, have, I remember being at events where he was at when I was living in Singapore. So yeah, I think it's a great step. All right, we're trying to get him on the show. He didn't tell me he would come on the show, so I'm going to go look. <laughs> Drop my name. Tell him I wrote about him for ABC <laughs> News. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Jason, for joining us this morning. Oh, it's thank lovely you. to be here. This is the highlight of my week, I can oh. tell you. Oh, thank you very much. And we much. look forward to seeing you back in Singapore in uh, when you're back on Money FM 89.3. And don't forget to give this Fredo Frog to FD. It's not yours, Glenn. Okay. You, you give okay. it to me, I'll keep it safe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Thank you, guys. It's 9.15. KISS 92 Time Check brought to you by Pu Tian. Pu Tian would like to thank you for your unwavering Kiss 92, all the great songs in one place.